and the kid of the year herself, Katanjali Rao, joins us now live from Denver, Colorado. Thanks so much for being here. Really, it's, it's an honor to speak to you and congratulations on this award. You know, I gave the most general description of your creations there because uh, there have been several and each one of them really is as impressive as the next. So, but start by telling me your personal favorite and why. Yeah, so first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's super exciting to be here. I think my personal favorite is actually the app that you showed up there. So Kindly is a service that's able to detect and prevent cyberbullying at an early stage. And it's just a cause that I'm super passionate about recently. And I've worked with UNICEF to help promote the importance of anti-cyberbullying. And um, I think I, I honestly see a future for it. And I'm really excited that people all over the world have started using it. Is there some irony in that, though, in that I've heard you're not even on social media? <laughs> I mean, I am on social media, but it's honestly limited. Like, the time that I spend on social media is nothing in comparison to the things that I'm doing outside of that. Okay. You know, cyberbullying is interesting because it's, you know, it's this young dynamic of kids wanting to prove that they're better than someone else by taking someone else down and, and being mean. You know, and a lot of teenagers, well, I should say especially teenagers, a lot of kids really, uh, part of this is that they have these more superficial aspirations. You know, they want to look good. They want to be popular. How much have you been able to convince them, you know, that being kind and actually enjoying science and technology are really what's actually cool? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is we have kind of been taught to follow the path that everyone else has been following. And we need to stray away from that normal. I think it's important to address that if I can do it, anyone can do it. Each and every one of us can be an innovator and each and every one of us can make a difference. People just don't know where to start, especially kids don't know where to start. And I'm hoping that as one of the faces of Gen Z, I'm able to amplify my voice and solicit new innovators into this world because, you know, all of us have the power to innovate, especially during these times where, you know, we're facing problems that have never been seen before. Right. You set a really high standard. And I mean, it's, it's very much appreciated. You are obviously, though, an exceptional human being as yourself. Um, but tell us what else went into that. I mean, what kind of support network did you have that really encouraged you and gave you the opportunities to do what you've been able to do? Yeah, and I could definitely let you know that I would not be here if it wasn't for the support of my parents and teachers and mentors along the way. And I think the biggest thing is I have people who believe in me and that makes all the difference is even though I'm a kid, even though I'm, you know, exercising my passions for science and technology, there's something so different about having people who support you and support those goals. So I'm super thankful to all the people along the years who have really believed in me and my causes. Now, have you thought about using technology to help maybe the kids that don't have that support network be able to realize their dreams as well? Because there's a lot of disparities in the U.S. education system. You know, what resources that go to certain public schools really don't go to others in more disadvantaged areas. Right. And I totally agree with you regarding the whole education system. I think that's one of the biggest problems we're facing is, you know, inequality in education. And I don't think education have a price put to it. And I don't think that people, kids should be left without education. So right now I'm working on building that support system for the students who don't have the opportunity to do so. I was so fortunate to have the opportunities and resources, but I now run workshops for students all over the globe and have impacted about 33,800 students to date, um, you know, teaching them and allowing them to explore their innovation passions. And, you know, I'm, I'm aiming to be that role model, that support group that they need in that world. That's amazing. Can you give us a hint as to what else uh, you're working on? What new piece of technology that's going to change the world? Right. So currently I'm working on how we can detect parasitic contaminants in water using the latest developments in genetically engineered microbes. So the whole concept is using living things to detect a living thing, which is pretty cool. Um, and apart from that, I also want to look at how we can prevent future pandemics. And hopefully this whole COVID-19 situation is coming to a close. But obviously I think that um, you know we're not going to have to wait another hundred years to see another pandemic, especially with 
what's going on in society as well. So um, yeah, I want to find some sort of data and analytics way to prevent that. Gitanjali, humanity is lucky to have you. Thanks so much for joining us there from Denver. We really appreciate it. Take care.